batching out projects on the CNC. That's what this video is all about, how to maximize production, uh, how to improve efficiency, uh, to make really, really compelling projects quick and easy and get them out the door. Uh, whether you're looking to grow your small business or your side hustle, or you're just a hobbyist, being able to produce something that looks like manufacturing from your own garage is pretty cool and definitely possible. And so this video, I'm gonna walk you through just some ideas of different materials and different options just to get a product done quickly and get it out the door, but also some tips for the machine itself. I'll be using an amazing I2R. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but then also the software, some tips within the software uh, for, for max production. So lots of ideas. Please feel free to use those timestamps to skip around uh, if you don't need to see the the software and you just want to whatever use those timestamps to skip around uh, but lots of ideas myself I'm actually a fifth grade teacher and I made all of these projects for volunteers at my school uh, you'll also see in the video how I made a custom frame a picture frame for all of my students got to involve uh, in, involve them in the process and so uh, even if you're not a teacher if you got a kid out of school uh, you can make a project for their class you could do something for the school auction or a family gift it's just great to be able to take an idea and just see it come to life imagination to reality right anyway so lots of ideas here lots of tips check it out batching out signs batching out projects on a cnc this video is sponsored by i2r imagination to reality if you're new to sign making be sure to check out my intro to sign making video uh, great tips all kinds of goodies we'll talk more about this later in the video Really, when it comes to batching out projects, you want to pick something that's inexpensive. So pine, just a standard board you get out of your local home center and stain, is a great method. Of course, you could do plywood, MDF, other options, but here I'm just showing just some basic stain on a basic pine board that I got at Home Depot can really give you some great results. So quick application, you can do preconditioners, all that kind of stuff, but just showing with some stain, and then insert your, your car. And right now you're gonna see you got contrast right away. So really quickly, I've got some great contrast with the natural color of the wood and the stain, and it makes a great project. Again, if your goal is to mass produce these, uh, this is a great efficient method. Again, if you're looking for more options, loads of options uh, in that other video. Uh, but here I've just got a basic sign, uh, a quote, uh, the mountains are calling and I must go with some mountains, a little plaque design, and it's just carving it out rather quickly. On this board, I can get quite a few pieces uh, knocked out in no time. It really, really goes rather quickly. Uh, I could use a masking uh, surface like this or a mask here, and I can get more uh, onto a piece. And so here I'm using what's called nesting mode. And so this is just a great Great way to maximize so a little bit about the software uh, right here in this video uh, if you don't need the software use this timestamps to skip ahead all right so one thing i can do here in vcarve is i can take my design so here i have text i have my image i have a border and i'm gonna go ahead and click Control a to circle everything uh, to highlight everything and i want to make multiple copies uh, on this design. So if I zoom out, you can see I have a rather large piece. I wanna maximize my production. So I could go to array copy and I can make multiple copies. So let's say, let's try and see if I can fit eight in here. I'll go ahead, uh, eight rows, one column and hit copy. And it's gonna go ahead and give me all of these copies up here. I'm gonna zoom out, but I wanna center everything. So I'm gonna go here, align to the material. All right. Now, as I did that, you'll notice that it's not going to fit on my material. However, not to fear, there's a really cool feature in VCarve called nesting mode. So here I am again, I'm going to hit control A just to highlight everything. And I'm going to click on nesting. And this is just going to maximize my material. And so uh, usually you can just keep whatever your automatic default settings are here. Uh, I've switched to a uh, 1 8 uh, end mill. And so when I get, cut the profile, I'm going to be using a 1 8 end mill. And I uh, got my clearance all set like so. And um, I'm not going to click number of copies or, or do anything like that. I'm just going to preview like so if I can fit it all there. And so it's rotated every piece to fit on my material. So if I zoom in here, you can see it's really close. So it's really close. So I'll have to be mindful of how I clamp this piece. 
uh, but I'm really maximizing uh, my material and I'm able to fit one more. Probably I would have only been able to fit seven on this piece, but I can get one more out of it. I'll just uh, have plenty of room here for a clamp and a clamp. I'll just have to probably move a clamp around here. Of course, if you have a vacuum table or the double stick tape method, uh, that would work as well. Uh, but one thing I do recommend before doing this is to test this out, right? So uh, it is pretty tight in here. And so as you click your profile, so as I'm adding my tool pass and I highlight on all my, you know, I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm gonna click on all my tool paths. And so imagine I did this for all of mine. And then when I go to my tool path, I'm gonna do my profile tool path, make sure I'm, I have an one eighth end mill. So one eighth end mill, got that set. You can set your passes uh, based on what you have, but really be mindful of, am I gonna cut on the line? Am I gonna cut outside the line? I'm gonna go ahead and cut outside the line. So the tool path is gonna come right along the outside there, and it's probably gonna overlap each other here. So again, this is a great uh, thing to, to test out, test out first. Uh, I'll just Again, I've only done three of these, but let's just go ahead and take a look and see what this looks like on the three and you know here you can get a get a feel for how it's going to cut out basically this tab is meaningless uh, and so that's something to consider maybe you'll reorient where you're going to place your tabs uh, specify that but uh, you can maximize your material with the nesting mode so just yet another feature uh, plenty of other features uh, excuse me videos uh, with more in-depth look at the nesting feature so once you have your tool pass all loaded from the software, I can just go ahead and finish it off. So here it is, it's just cutting out those profiles uh, of the plaque, just a little extra design element. And then I did use that 1 8 inch end mill. So 1 8 inch is just smaller, it's strong enough as long as you're following the parameters of the tooling and I can maximize maximize the, the wood and I'm not gonna damage any of the pieces. Again, account for where you put your tabs and making sure everything stays secure. So this is a great option here, but I do wanna show really quickly what it can look like if you do the masking option. Again, I have that whole intro to sign making. There's just so many different uh, options for you there. Just wanna show some other options here in this video. Again, if you're trying to batch and do multiple things, there's so many things to take into consideration, uh, but it is fun to have a couple different styles, uh, really to make your pieces stand out, uh, especially if you're planning on selling. More tips on selling at the end of the video. The most efficient way I found to break these pieces down is to go ahead and take it over to a miter saw and make it more manageable size pieces and then using a router table with a flush trim bit. So a good flush trim bit makes a big difference. Links to all of these tools and whatnot are down in the description if so interested. But you're able to clean up those tabs really quickly and get a nice clean edge to save you a little bit of time on sanding. You could also at this time add a round over or an edge profile if you wanted to for your piece. You are gonna have to do sanding if you're mass producing or doing a lot. A bench top unit like this, uh, like this belt sander works great. Really cleans up any, any sanding lines that you might need, anything that the flush trim bit was unable to do, and it saves you from having to use a handheld unit. Smaller bench top units like this really help with those curves. So again, efficiency, these types of tools really can help and they are worth uh, the, the small expense. Of course, you are gonna still have to do some hand sanding uh, before finish. Uh, I do like to use tack cloth. So once I've done all my sanding, I use tack cloth to remove any of the dust, the sawdust, before I add finish. Plenty of options for finish, but I don't think you can beat a spray lacquer. So just a rattle can, a spray lacquer works so well. I have all these pieces laid out. This is just gonna provide a protective coat uh, for the piece to last. It also will provide some more color contrast, especially if I'm doing hardwoods uh, to bring out those natural colors. I usually do about six or seven coats. Uh, before the last coat, I do sand it about 400 grit, and then I remove the dust with the tack cloth and add that last coat. But uh, this is a great way to mass produce a bunch of projects and I think they look rather nice. So here you can see there's just a lot of versatility. There's plenty of options in the look you're going for. I do like having different styles to show the variation. I think it's just a little bit more appealing, uh, especially if you're selling these like at a farmer's market or something like that. Again, more tips on selling later in the video, but here you can see how this batch turned out. Another great batching project are these frames uh, that I made with my students. Great for school, like I talked about earlier. So really quick, I wanna show you how this process can go about. 
So again, I'm just using some inexpensive wood that I can get at a home center, pretty easily found. But there are some great tips in here that apply for, for any kind of project, whether you're doing it for sales or school or, or whatnot. But here I have a design of making some picture frames. I'm gonna have the students do the color later, so this isn't pre-stained, but you could certainly do that if you're planning to sell frames or something like this. But I'm carving out the piece like so. Now one thing to take into consideration with these home center boards is they're not always perfectly flat. So here you can see the V-carve, it's really, really faint. You can hardly see the mountains there, it's a little bit deeper. And that's accounted for how tight my board is. So here it's a little bit deeper. So as I clamp my board down, I have some gaps. I have some gaps in how my board is attached to the surface. You can see uh, it's cupped a little bit there. Uh, it's not perfectly flat. So when I sense, I put the touch off sensor for the height, it's different at different places. So here it's really faint in other places. So obviously a vacuum table would uh, be a, a non-issue here because that would suck the whole board down flat. But especially if you're using larger sheet goods like this, you can often get these gaps like this. Now you of course can add a bunch of clamps on here. Double stick tape does help. However, it still can potentially be an issue. So what I did here on some of them to fix it is just showing you here, I switched it over. I just did a quick tool path for the ones that I thought were a little too low. So if you run into this issue and one just didn't turn out, don't move your piece, keep it clamped in, and then I can rerun just that section, just that carve, uh, so I don't lose that whole piece there. And so that is one little workaround. Of course, you'd move that touch off probe to where that piece is, so it would be a deeper, a deeper look. It would just look a little bit better. On this particular frame, uh, here I'm just rounding out. A cool idea with this frame project is you could use that interior piece while it's already clamped down to do a bonus coaster or a bonus design because it's all locked down as is. But again, uh, just this different ideas for you here for batching. With these frames, I did not add a, a recess in the back. You could certainly do two-sided carving mode or you could just use a router and a rabbiting bit to create that recess behind for the picture and like a backer board, something like that or stand, plenty of options. But this again is gonna be a project that I, I did with my students. And so CNC's are really great. They're great for so many things, but I really do as a teacher think they're fantastic to incorporate in the schools. And so even though I teach elementary, I definitely plan on incorporating this with student projects, helping them learn more about STEM projects, science, technology, engineering, math. And so a great idea. So maybe you wanna get uh, one of these tools at your school, at your kid's school or a local school, great idea. All right, so same uh, process as before, break it down into smaller pieces, use that flush trim router bit. It just cleans them up so quickly. It gets them out uh, lickety split. For this project, uh, I had the students do some stain, but here, you know, you could just do some stain and see what it looks like. I'm like, hey, that's one look where you just go all one color. Uh, that's a method some of my students pick, but they also pick some other cool options. So as this was a school project, I just laid out all of their custom signs. I just did some simple, some simple stain that was more school friendly and I had them do the sanding. So students did the sanding. Yes, this is the way to do it. Have the kids do the work, but I uh, taught them a little bit about woodwork, a little bit about the CNC, got them excited, and then they added the stain. And so some of them did this really cool thing where they just lightly added the stain on the top and tried to not get any in the carved out portions. And so that contrast really came out. So even though I didn't pre-stain these and then carve it out, they were able to get that same look. So some creativity, some different ideas, but I thought they turned out amazing. So much variation, but this is a great project. So maybe you wanna do this for your kid's school, your grandkid's school. Uh, maybe, you know, just call up the school and offer your services to teach them some more, but fun project. All right, wanna talk a little bit about sales, side hustle, small business kind of stuff. So if that's not your thing, go ahead and skip on ahead. But one of the beauties of a machine like this, especially one of these larger models, you don't have to get the larger model, you can still do this with a, a two by two, you can batch out this project so quickly, right? Especially using you know that nesting feature, you know, I can get so many you know, whatever puzzle shape pieces on a sheet. And so if I just wanna go with plywood, right? Using a nicer, this was a nicer higher end oak veneered plywood. It looks great, it looks amazing. And all I had to do was just clear coat and, and some black spray paint. This is just pine, pine and stain. This was the simplest, easiest, plenty of other options, but I can, minimal work, minimal work to get to this. And 
I mean, I can make a stack of these and I could sell these for 25, 30 bucks easily, right? Obviously selling and price point, it's different by region. I get that, I totally get that. Uh, but myself as someone who primarily sells, you know, hardwoods and cutting boards and such, having just a bunch of these on hand, these would go really quick. And especially for those of you who wanna try and get into the higher end market uh, with you know the, the nicer stuff, but you can't get the customer, having projects like this available makes them, you know, kind of gets that business, get, gets them in the door. And then over time, maybe you can get to a higher end item and maybe eventually you do furniture or something like that. Do you want to talk about wood, wood choice, right? So this is beautiful, right? I am such a fan of using the hardwoods and this is just flooded black. Talk about this piece particular in my sign making video. Check that one out. But if you're using a higher end item, you can sell for a, a higher price point. So there's certainly so many options within sales. And again, it's the variables are, are based on where you're at, uh, you know, your social media presence, uh, whether you're doing craft shows, whether you're doing websites, all that kind of stuff. But really, I, I can't encourage you enough just to do the, the pine, do the cheap stuff, do the, the plywood, just have a bunch of that on hand. You have a small price point, right? 20 to 30 bucks. And then over time, if you're, if you're growing, in your business if this is helping you grow your business you can start getting into the higher higher quality woods or you know higher end plywoods and make bigger signs and then you can do a little bit more customization of course i love customization right customization is great with the cnc but picking a design that you think will will really resonate with your your area i live in the pacific northwest here in the pacific northwest we can't get enough of our mountains so this if I, if I decided to start batching these out and sell them, these are gonna sell like hotcakes. So uh, kind of think about your demographic, think about your area, your region, and uh, just go from there. And um, minimal expense, minimal expense with materials, minimal time uh, to, to really get, get someone in the door business-wide. All right, a huge thank you to I2R Imagination to Reality for making this possible, uh, right? Obviously with the CNC machine, uh, but you know, sponsoring this video and making it possible for me to make these cool things with some awesome CNC machines. So really quick, I wanna talk about what I think makes them so incredible is the fact that it is such a simple setup. I was able to get this uh, machine up and running in no time. Uh, you know, there's the onboarding call, uh, customer service is incredible, any issue, uh, they do have training calls available for teaching you how to use the machine, uh, software, all that kind of stuff. They can do remote logins uh, if that's your need, but just some great, great features. Uh, it is a robust machine. It's fantastic. So you do have your smaller units available. Uh, these are the B series, uh, but you know, if you have a smaller space, two by two, two by three, and then you get to, uh, this is the unit that I have. So this is the B24. Um, so an incredible unit, so much possible possibilities, loads of other options, but a uh, huge thanks to I2R and um, get excited for some more CNC content in the future. There you have it, batching out signs on a CNC. This video I gave you some value, if it gave you some inspiration, if you pick, picked up any tips along the way, please consider subscribing to see more like this. Uh, for all of you CNC users, enthusiasts, or uh, those interested in, I will be doing a lot more CNC videos with this machine. I will also be doing more of my traditional content uh, with just traditional tools. Uh, however, a lot of new ideas with the CNC. Uh, getting back to some hardwoods. So I, I wanted to start with lots of signs and just really explore some of the cheaper, uh, you know, less expensive woods. But now I'm gonna start getting into some of the beautiful woods, some really gorgeous hardwoods, some different projects that aren't sign based. Uh, so stay tuned for those videos uh, and, and see all of the different ideas come into life. I wanna thank again I2R, uh, Imagination to Reality for sponsoring this video and sending me this beautiful machine. Lots of possibilities here. So thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, make some sawdust and we'll see you next time.